Now, this horse is um, amazing. He's really fabulous. If you, um, if you know about dressage, he is, he's called Vallegro, and um, he is five years old. He was champion four-year-old at the last year. You think, I think he won three champions. Every championship he did as a four-year-old, he won. This year as a five-year-old, he was the novice champion, he was the sheer water champion, he was the supreme champion. He's just a star. He's a real winner. And I bought him when he was two years old, and I got him very cheap, A, because he was very small as a two-year-old, his breeding isn't very good, and... Um, and he just turns his toes out a, a fraction, which was always, a, that's another thousand off, really, isn't it? So, um, you know, you look for everything that's wrong when you're buying them so that you can afford them. Um, and he was at the grading, and he didn't grade because of those things. A, he wasn't big enough, as I said, and his mother line on the breeding wasn't good enough. And they're very hot on that in Holland. I mean, it's not just a question of, you could go with a world-class horse, but if the breeding isn't fitting in and suiting, they're not, bit, you know, they're not passing. So they have to fulfill the whole, the whole criteria. So it's actually a very good place to go and buy, buy a young dressage horse. And um, I bought him back, and then I sold him to a friend of mine, because I said, oh, he's not big enough for me. Well, then, thankfully, she rang me up, and she said, oh, I've just had a tax bill I can't afford. It. So I said, oh, all right, I'll keep him then. So then I kept him, and then s bit by bit, and, I mean, I didn't know how fabulous he was. I mean, just bit by bit, he started to get more and more and more amazing. And um, he wins everything because he has, if you look at him, he wants to be, it'll take a bit of time to warm him in a bit, but he is so uphill when he's going, when we let him up into a competition frame. So that's a very important natural asset he has for dressage. He's uphill. Secondly, <clears throat> if you look at the way already, at five years old, his hind legs are bending. And when you think that a dressage horse, most of its power has to end up on the hind legs. The hind legs carry the horse. The horse shifts its weight back. It comes off the forehand. Well, if you look at those hind legs, they're like this. They're flexing and bending and flexing and bending. I mean, that's natural. That is, that's already there. And when you see him canter... I expect you all to burst into tears because he is like, he's fabulous. And he has had, I think, in, as a four-year-old, he actually got a 10 for a canter. I mean, that's unheard of, really, as a, for a pace. I mean, you can get, at uh, the World Breeding Championships for young horses, you will, you, you know, the winner, the gold medalist might get a 10, but, I mean, generally you're in the nine point, the good ones are at 9.5, 9.6. Still great canters get 8.5. He had a 10 as a four-year-old, and he's had a 10 this year as a five-year-old for his canter, and you'll see why when uh, we might save that right till the very end. And um, so it's just really interesting for you to see something that's so natural. Again, as I say, you know, it's easy to say, you know, what a wonderful rider Charlotte is. I, th I keep saying what a wonderful rider I am when I'm riding here. Um, but, of course, we're not. We're steering a very wonderful horse. And... Um, he also is, as you can see, very genuine. And he was like this at four years old. Even though there were sometimes some amazing horses at four years old that were probably better movers than him, they wouldn't go around the edge. They wouldn't go in the ring or they were tense. I mean, this one is just like, it was like he was born, he was a born professor, 20 years old, you know, just in the ring, never looked, did the job. Um, just, loves, just loves his work. And that is half the problem. He goes like a Duracell battery. So, you know, when you, you know, uh, uh, because he's young, we don't want to do, and now he's learning things. I mean, he is five. He can do five four-time changes, five three-time changes. Well, he did. We taught him all of that, and then he was like, right, now I'm doing them every day, wherever we go, whatever you do. So um, we've stopped doing them now because he's, you know, I don't want him to do that, and he's, you know, he's at the moment, you know, those are just his favourite thing. But, I mean, he is intelligent, you know, when he's um, learned something. So what I was going to say with the stretching, this horse, we can't stretch right at the beginning in this situation because he is obviously very hot, he's excited. So that canter, as you can see there, 
It has, look at the way his hind leg again jumps up under his stomach. That is like so underneath for a dressage horse that you can imagine him doing a pirouette already. And in fact, we'll see him when we collect him a little bit. Also, look at the height in his foreleg, the way that he lifts his front up. This whole picture uh, for an actual pace is very, very special. Um, but still, uh, what I was going to say at the beginning was, although I want to have him really stretch, and I want Charlotte to really stretch him, when he's so goey and he's so hot, you can't do that, because if you give him a long rein, he just runs off. And uh, so what we do is just work him on the bit to start with until he starts to like relax and get tired so we have a bit of control. And then as soon as he does that, then I say to her, now you stretch it. Now you can let him really out. And he has to do that more and more. Sometimes, so if you have... Um, huh? Here we go. Sometimes if you have a horse, as I said, that will not stretch at the beginning, and um, you, have to, you have to teach it to stretch, you'll probably get the best stretching right at the end of a session. So, when you get to the end of a session and the horse says, which this one will probably do, when you get to the end of a session and, and they are a bit tired and they stretch, don't do one round and then say, oh, I've done it, I've stretched it, I'm stopping, I'm getting off. You know, do a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit. So the horse realizes that being stretched is a nice place to be. You know, it's, it's there for his physical well-being and it's there for his mental well-being. So when, he, when you do get the stretch, then just carry, carry it on a bit longer and a bit longer. A bit longer. So they really like to do that. And, um, and then bit by bit, you can start introducing that at the beginning of the session. Is he still very forward going, Charlotte? She still will say that in an hour. That's the problem. Uh, okay, trot again. Trot. That's it. Now just pat him. Softer. Slow down. Slow down. The trouble is, he wants to do. He wants to just give everything, and he wants to give so much. And as I said at the beginning, if I, you know, I don't want him to do that. I mean, it's fine here when he's showing off, but you know, we don't want him to do this at home all the time because I want him to look after himself. And as I said, if you go and buy a horse, go and buy one that can move. I mean, like you just saw with Bling. I mean, it, he can move and will move amazingly, but he can also be economical. So that there are days where you come out and you just ride them economically. And then by doing that, you know, they're not always like d giving all this big trot and this big canter and all this energy. I mean, they just have to come out, breathe, put their head down, do easy work, just make them supple, finish, put them away. Next day, bring them out, bring them up to the bit, do some shoulder in, do a bit of half pass, teach them some movements, stretch them again, finish third day, you know, we normally hack them, or, you know, we do two days in a row in the school, and that's how I find that they actually learn better, because you always obviously get your best day generally on the second day, and then on the third day they need a break, then we work them again on the fourth day, and, the, and on the third and fourth, sorry, fourth and fifth day, and then um, he, I mean, he's five, but he has the weekends off. So, I mean, dressage horses have to face a lot of... Um, things nowadays and if they go to uh, international show um, you know you've got well it's a bit like being here really with even more people you know you can have uh, world cups now you can have like 10,000 people spectating well 10,000 people don't not eat their crisps don't not rattle their bags don't you know not you know scream with laughter and blast music at you when you go past and I tell you to have a horse that's hot enough to be a good dressage horse, in other words, he really wants to do his work, and yet one that's relaxed enough that it copes with what you see in an international dressage arena, it's, yeah, well, it's a very special temperament. I think that he's got that temperament, and um, because he can have all the power and all the go, and yet he's very intelligent, and he's not, um, he's, you know, he wants to do his job, and, you know, he's come in here, as the last one did as well, but he's come in here, and, you know, he's not, really focusing too much on everybody else. He's starting to calm down now and listen to Charlotte. Now see if he'll just take the reins down, Charlotte, if you started to let him out now. Even longer. Good. And these, the dressage horses at international level that are winning, 
So, you know, really the ones that are like getting the 75% which is a very high score. There's still 25% missing, by the way, there. But, you know, 75% uh, can win you a gold medal. Um, but, you know, that's the boring thing about dressage. You're never, ever good enough. So if you ever think you are going to be good enough, don't bother doing the sport because there's always a judge to make sure you don't think that. And, um, but to get those scores, you know, you have to be sitting on sevens and eights all the way through a test. And, you know, so although you can have highlights, you can have a, you know, can have a nine, you might then get a seven. It all balances itself out. It's very difficult to get the nines all the way through. Um, and, you know, you've got to really, as I said, you, we've just seen two horses, two lovely five-year-olds. Both look like special in their own ways. But how can I tell which one, if either of them, will make it? Because, A, I don't know whether in five years time, as I said, it'll probably be five years before they get to Grand Prix, in five years time, is there te will Bling be hot enough? Will he be relaxed enough? Will they both be sound? Will they both be able to do PF? I don't, you know, that's something you don't know. And so it can be a very uh, long training period and sometimes you get there and you think, oh, well now it's not going to make it. <laughs> and you've just done your five years of thinking you were going to make it. But there are lots of horses, and um, I have no doubt he'll get to Grand Prix. He will get there. I know he will, because he wants to do it. And um, we've trained enough horses to know how to train them. But, you know, whether he'll be a special, special Grand Prix horse, who knows? Give him a walk a minute. Now, just put him on the buckle. The walks... As you saw, Bling has actually quite a big walk, quite a big walk. This horse, if you look where his front foot lands, and now you look where his hind foot lands, he gets a one hoof over track. So that isn't good enough for an eight. I mean, he would have to have two hoof over track for an eight. But the trouble is, because he has already read the Encyclopedia of Grand Prix Dressage, he is always walking like the rising walk you know he's like am I going to PF am I going to PF am I going to PF and you know so we, that's why that's something we have to work on with him out hacking that he will go on the buckle put his head down and just walk and stop thinking about trying to be Grand Prix um, so if the rhythm when you look at his rhythm his rhythm's perfect there is not a bad step that he takes so he doesn't have what we call a pace a pacing walk where they walk like a camel he doesn't do that but he just gets very upward, 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 and we have to try and get him to go downward in it. And, of course, once you've done, um, when you've done one round, he'll start to relax. But, of course, as we all know, in a dressage test, you don't get one round. You have to drop the reins, and you have to do it in 60 metres. And um, so that's something still that we could really work on improving over the, over the winter, really, uh, is just trying to get him just to just soften up. Okay, if we just do um, a little bit of trot, Charlotte, and you can just do some shoulder in steps just on the long side. Now, like I said to you, a hot horse has to, you know, to be able to ride it, you have to be able to get your legs on it. A lazy horse, you keep your legs away from it so that you can keep creating sensitivity. So what helps her, or what would help you as a rider, to actually get your leg on a horse? Well, doing a little bit of shoulder in, doing some leg in, anything that makes you put your legs on the horse. So, when he is quite excited and on, and on a hotter day on her legs like he obviously is today, just by riding these very small angles of shoulder in, it's not almost not even shoulder in. I just want her to feel that his right hind lands between his front legs. But what that's doing is it's helping her hold her leg on him. And he has to accept that because he's moving sideways. So that's a very, you know, useful exercise just with these goey horses. Here's the leg. Stay in the shoulder in. And also, now just exercise him, Charlotte, where you just think almost towards length and strides in shoulder in. Very small, small. Forward, 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 and back again. Good. So he's, she's not letting him run away. She's riding him forward. And you have to be able to ride forward. If you can't ride forward as a dressage rider, then get the noose out. You have to be able to... Good. Nope. 
Just slowly, slowly. Very good. Okay, and straighten him. Right, now just come across this long diagonal. And uh, let's just see you just let him just lengthen forward. Now, again, a horse, watch this if he does it properly. A horse that can do this, good, at his age, with that, again, it's his hind legs that are the most impressive part. They're pushing his forehand up. And you know, a horse, I know that a horse that has an extended trot like he has will one day, when we can really make him ride a ball, as in you can really ride him forward, when you can put that extended trot into his working trot, that's when he will be gobsmackingly, fabulously beautiful, I think. He's um, do one more again, uh, down the long side in a shoulder four. But what's so impressive, obviously from a judge's point of view when he does it, is his rhythm. You don't think, oh, he's run off. You just think he's just gone into orbit. You know, he just gets this lovely expression. He lifts his shoulders up. Let's have you go across the diagonal again. Just take your time and then, you know, really like slow at the start. You've got to think slow front legs. Oops. Good. Or fast back legs. But look at the, just again, just look at the whole picture. Look how his shoulders lift up, but look how his hind legs bend. They cut slow, slow front leg. Right, now relax and now let him go. Let him move. Very good. Good. And back again. Beautiful. <laughs> good. Down the long side. One more clap. <laughs> Good. He knows what winning is anyway, so we don't need to worry about that. <laughs> Good. But, you know, some of them are born to it. You know, I always... And forward again. Relax the hand. Relax the hand. Good. That's it. But, you know, he's always looking interested as well. You know, he's always with his ears pricked. He's always, like, wondering what's coming next. And, uh, you know, that to me, it, you know, says so much about his attitude. And so it's very, when we talk about temperament, you know, like I said, you could go and buy a horse that's got a great walk, trot, and canter, but if it hasn't got this will and this desire to go, well, you're not going to be going far. You might get it to pre-St. George nowadays because people know a lot more. I mean, it's fascinating how many people, you know, training now have actually really learned to train their horses to a much higher level. There's huge classes now at pre-St. George. You know, 20 years ago, you'd have 10 in a pre-St. George. You now get 50 or 60 in a pre-St. George. So people are learning to train horses, which is great. But the ones that go the next step that's where we still only have a depth of maybe like 30 horses in the country that are Grand Prix horses, and five of those are good enough to be on the British team that will go to an Olympics or Worlds or Europeans. So it's a very small percentage. A lot of that, of course, to do is, you know, are the riders good enough as well? I mean, you know, 30, 30 riders have been, you know, learned a lot to train their horses to Grand Prix. Just canter him once more. And we just let him just move on in the canter a little bit as well. So just, um, just show, Charlotte, on the short side now, how his ability uh, to, to collect a little bit, okay? So just, you know, just try and bring him back. Now, again, a horse that's naturally strong behind, if you just look at him on the short side here, you see how, look at that. Just collects him, collects him. But because he's so strong behind, of course, he just takes his weight back, sits up, and now just let him come forward. Slow, slow. Look how big the strides get. He's not running again. Bigger, 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 bigger. And now bring him back again. Now, this is, we are doing more of this collected canter with him because, you know, again, good, good. Change the rein. Good. Just slowly forward. So we are doing this collected canter with him now to start to really build up the strength behind. And now forward. But, oh, there we go again. He's, you know, you just say the word. <clears throat> you don't actually have to move your leg. You just whisper change, and it's, you know, he's one of those. Okay, good. Pat him. Very good. Yeah, good boy. Very clever. Okay, make a trot and just let him stretch. 
Okay, well, I think um, it's been, you know, great talking to you all, and it's lovely to be, like I said, to show you two fabulous five-year-olds, but two so different five-year-olds who have to be ridden so differently, although they're both very good. And as I said, you know, you'll be, um, hopefully see them in the future being what we hope they all will be. Um, but don't be disappointed if you don't, because so few do make it, and you have to... Uh, expect that so just give him a walk that's fine so thank you very much for listening hope you enjoyed it see you this afternoon